we are still on the gauge model and series this is crunch econometrics and it is good to have you back in this video i'll be estimating a gauge in main model give you the intuition behind why we estimate gauge in main models but before i do so in my usual way i will encourage you to please watch these videos uh, in sequential order please do not skip any i really want you to understand how to estimate gauge models so let us get some intuition for estimating a gauge m model remember that risk averse investors may require a premium as a compensation for them to hold a risky asset that premium is clearly a function of the risk that is the higher the risk the higher the premium should be if the risk is now captured by the volatility or by the conditional variance then the conditional variance may enter into the conditional mean equation as specified here so this is the conditional variance in the main equation so the gatch m allows the conditional mean to depend on its own conditional variance it models a time varying risk premium the same gatch m model can also use the standard deviation of the series to capture the risk. So in the first one, we have the conditional variance. In the second one, we have the standard deviation. Therefore, the gauge um, PQ model can be generalized to what you are seeing on the screen. So the first two are the main equations for the gauge M. While this one, this part, this last equation is the usual um, conditional variance equation that we are used to by now so now let's proceed to e-views and estimate the gacha model using the variance in the main equation then secondly we use the standard deviation in the main equation and we compare the results i double click on the series i go to quick click on estimate equation i list the series in the usual form that we've been using I go to methods, I change it to arch. Please follow me and do likewise with your data. Remember, we are estimating a gatch M model. So we come to this box and we change none. We open it and we change none to variance. So let's start with the variance first in the main equation. So we change this to variance. We go to options. For optimization method, I've been using Evius Legacy, so I change this to Evius Legacy. I don't change any other thing. I go back to specification. Everything looks fine here. My sample size is okay. It's a usual sample size. I click OK. So here we can see the Gatch M model using the variance in the main equation. And the conditional variance is captured by the Gatch, you can see here in the main equation so do not confuse it with the gatch minus one here they are not the same remember we are estimating a gatch m model and what can you observe the coefficient of the variance in the main equation is not statistically significant but we can say that by including it in the main equation it has improved the significance of the gatch term in the variance equation so this is what we can conclude by using the variance in the main equation prop value is 20 percent or 21 percent clearly not significant but including it has improved the gauge term in the variance equation now let's use um, the standard deviation and see whether we are going to have a different outcome so we click on estimate we modify variance now to standard deviation we don't change anything we click ok so here we have once you see a square root gauge, this is the standard deviation. So we can also see that the standard deviation is clearly not significant. It's 22.2%. It's not significant statistically. But including it has improved the gauge term in the variance equation. So the findings is not different from what we got from the variance. So what do we conclude as a financial analyst? Let's go back to PowerPoint for more explanation. So this is the specification I used. Remember to change the HM from non to variance. And my optimization method is Avius Legacy. So this is for the variance 
uh, equation. And here is the result that we got. We saw that the conditional variance term in the mean equation is statistically not significant, 21% approximately here. So what do we conclude? We can say that this risk premium is not significant to hedge against holding a risky asset. It's not significant. So we can say that the asset in question may not be risky to hold. So as an investor, if you are using the variance to hedge against holding the risk, you can clearly see that this asset is not risky at all. So you can hold it. The variance term, which is a gash term, is clearly not significant in the main equation. Again, for the standard deviation, remember to modify the HM box to reflect standard deviation. I use Avius Legacy as usual. And our results also shows that the standard deviation coefficient is also not significant, is over 22%. Same conclusion, we can say that the risk premium is not significant to hedge against holding this risk. And therefore, we can say that the asset is not risky to hold. So this video has summarized your um, basic knowledge on how you can estimate a Gachem model using the conditional variance in the main equation or using the standard deviation in the main equation. Check out the coefficient in the main equation to see whether it's significant enough to be a premium that will hedge against holding a risky asset. In my situation, both coefficients are statistically not significant. So these are references and readings to support what we have just watched in relation to estimating a Gatch M model. Kindly read up at least one or two papers. It will strengthen your understanding of Gatch models. Video tutorials are clearly not sufficient. You have to read. Thank you so much. We have covered five topics now. As you can see on the screen, do not skip any. Keep yourself abreast of Gatch models by watching these videos in sequential order. I am grateful to all the comments I've received so far since I began this GACH modeling series. They've been encouraging. I thank you for your questions, for the queries, for the comments, for the critics, for the uploads, for the commendation. I thank you all so very much. Continue to share my videos to your students, to your academic community. For as many who are still afraid of econometrics, please tell them crunch econometrics simplifies understanding. Thank you for watching. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with the next video, which is on how to estimate a threshold gauge or what you can call the GJR gauge.